Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wednesday, March 23rd. Bar Baker starts us off with Into My Heart. Wednesday's devotion is found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Julia Seymour. Our scripture reading is Luke 15, 1 through 3, and 11b to 19. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. And so he told them this parable. And then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. And a few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and began, he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would have gladly filled himself up with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am of dying of hunger. I will get up and I will go to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some stories are so familiar that it's easy to miss the details that are right in front of us. Cultural studies of the prodigal son narrative from Luke 15 have shown that different people notice different details of the story. In places that are well acclimated and acquainted with hunger, the note about the famine in the far country stands out clearly. For societies oriented around fatherly leadership, the honor or dishonor of the patriarch is a major detail of the story. Many small moments are tucked away in this story. The descriptions of what the pigs, pigs were fed. The younger son rehearsing what to say to his father. The father spotting the son while he's still a long way off. The enslaved person's report to the elder brother. And the elder brother's mention of a goat for a party with his friends. Together they become more than the sum of their parts. We even have details about ourselves that we put in the story. We can reflect on what we have waited for someone's return or felt someone else was unjustly celebrated or st struck out on our own with an adventure in mind. The broad strokes and the small de details of this familiar Bible story mean that everyone can relate to these characters. The phrase, God is in the details, is used to emphasize the importance of attention and precision. Today's story shows us God's presence in details on a grand scale. The God who receives all prodigals with love knows all the little notes and nuances of our lives. Nothing is beyond God's notice, not the pigs, not the 
prodigal or the patriarch. Remembering God's presence in and the awareness of the details of our lives consoles our spirits. This comfort is how we are equipped by grace to live each day. Let us pray. God of all details, strengthen our awareness of your presence in all things. May that presence bring consolation and courage for all our days. Amen. Our closing hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, verse 1. Oh,